I think I've just found for me that to find a character's voice, to find their accent, to find how they want to be sort of perceived in the world um, helps me so much to to understand who they are, you know. And what I find really fascinating about the voice as well, depending on like the arc of a character too, is that that can change how they how they sort of approach people or a situation or a new room full of people or whatever it is. That can sort of change with the more confidence they they gain or they lose. Um, and you know, even in Ammonite, the, the film that we were speaking about, the character that I play has lost a child and is sort of gone through depression or some sort of melancholy. And so it was really interesting to have that state that she's in mentally and physically affect her voice, how much she says and how much she doesn't say, and um how comfortable she is in herself to push her voice. Yeah. Um, so I find that really fascinating. And I, I find that for me, once I've discovered roughly what that sound is for, for a character, almost like they're an instrument, I can then like get it up on its feet and give it a bit of muscle and, um, and flesh it out. And, and it suddenly starts to make its way into my body. So, yeah. It's piece by piece, you know, and, and that's what I've always really loved about about what we do is that, you know, there's only so much that you can bring to it before you need another department head to come in and go, okay, this is what I was thinking. This is what my idea was. And this is my interpretation of your character. What do you think about that? And suddenly you've got this other brain that you can work with and, um, you know, this person becomes more and more real the, the more people you bring into it almost you know um so it's yeah it's it's a really especially with costume I found like working with people like Jacqueline Duran um she's incredibly open to your ideas for the costumes not just to that character is but like what kind of colors you saw yourself in or certain prints or do you think you'd have a cape or a jacket? You know, she 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 allows you to sort of ask those questions and in turn that that only helps you as an actor to figure out who this person is. I think there needs to be a balance between both because, you know, the directors that I've worked with who have made me feel incredibly safe and guided by them means that I'm <clears throat> more confident and more comfortable to adapt to their sort of style of filmmaking but I, I do think it's the director's job to go like I'm gonna look after you and I'm gonna make sure you're all right because you know to to be an actor and to play that role on a film set is is definitely the most vulnerable place to be in um out of all the departments because you're just kind of gone like I might mess this up but it's up to you you know you decide if this was crap or not um and in order to take that leap of faith you you do need the um you do need the care and the support of your director and also the discipline of your director but then I do I have always felt that you know if if you're in a position as an actor where you've been able to, to choose whether you want to work with a certain director or not, you're working with them because of their style and you're working with them because of the type of movies they make. So you need to be willing to stretch yourself to accommodate them as well. Um, and I guess that's just why the relationship between actor and director is so kind of sacred and it's so it's so make or break to the experience that you'll have on a film is because it is literally like parent and child where <laughs> if, if it's not right and if it's not as, as strong as it should be, like you'll be a mess. But if it's, if it's one that has like lots of love and, and support and discipline in it, then you can do anything. So like working with somebody like Greta Gerwig, I, I feel like I can do anything when I'm with her and it's less because of my ability and it's more because she makes me think that I can, so. 
you know, you've been cast for a reason, not anybody else. So there's something that you do naturally that is right for this role. And you, you do need to go into these situations, even if you're mad nervous and go, no, like I'm here for a reason. This is, this is mine now, you know, this is my role. And, I, and I've watched some of the other interviews that you've done and I think it was Roz, that, Roz Hubbard that said like, for those few minutes that you go into an audition, that is your time. And for those five, 10 minutes, this character is yours. It doesn't belong to anyone else. So you do what you think is right. And I think one of the things that I've always had, even if I'm unsure of something in the moment, you kind of have to go, what I'm doing is right. You have to, you have to commit to what you're doing. You can't flip flop. Like, even if it's the, the wrong choice or it doesn't quite fit with the scene or even the character or whatever, for the moment that you're doing it, do it and stick to it, you know? And if they want to come in afterwards and go try a bit of this, try a bit of that, that's fine. But um, no, I think you're right. I think, you know, the reason why we love Philip Seymour Hoffman or Kate Blanchett or Meryl Streep or wh whoever you're watching is because it's them. It's not anybody else. They're not, you know, robots. <laughs> I always say that that is what you have to hold on to as much as you can as you get older. And it's hard because, you know, even if you weren't an actor, when you go into your teenage years and your early 20s and just for the rest of your life, you're like aware of the person you are. You're aware, overly aware of how you come across to people, how you sound, how you look, um, what kind of a person somebody thinks you are, but you're not actually that, you know, you just, you just start to overthink everything as you become aware of yourself. And the blessing of being a child is that you just don't have that yet. And you just do things. And if someone says, why don't you run over there and, you know, twirl around and pretend you've got a cape on and then, you know, explode and you go, okay, yeah, grand. And I think it's because you've got this total belief. And it's like what I was saying with, it's exactly the same with a scene as you approach a scene you have to go okay this is what's happening and I totally believe in what's happening like truly believe in it truly believe that this is your life this is who you are and it's it can be scary but it's a brilliant feeling to go totally in um and yeah and I think you know one of the reasons why I think it was it was just luck as well and the likes of Roz and John Hubbard being supportive enough to to give me certain roles when I was younger but I know I, I definitely had this um approach towards acting which was just total belief and being completely uninhibited by what I was doing and 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 also like not taking it too seriously. Like it's not serious. You can really care about it. And it can be something that's really like it is one of the most important things to me. And it always will be for as long as I do it or don't do it. But don't take it seriously and don't take yourself too seriously, you know? And I think that the that lightness of touch will allow you to keep enjoying it and allow you to kind of go oh, fuck it, I'm gonna try this thing now like I found that on Little Women just kind of I had gotten to this stage where I was like okay I've played people that are very sort of straight down the line or sort of ethereal or a little bit of an outsider or whatever and I was like I want to just like mess it up a bit and be loud and do stupid things with my faces because my face because I was at this stage where I had done that other stuff and I was bored of it um and so from a totally selfish point of view, I just wanted to do something different and it was great. Being decent and being kind is much more important than being a good actor. And that was something that my mom always said to me growing up is that the most important thing for me to be is, is nice to people and respectful of what another person is doing or, you know, an issue that they might have or the kind of day that they're having you know is something that I I wouldn't even be aware of and I and I can't kind of take that for granted and 
you know, I've had the chance to work with absolutely brilliant actors and actors that are still sort of finding their way or whatever. The people that you remember, whether it's an actor or a crew member, are the nice ones. And they're the ones that you want to keep working with. You know, um, nobody wants to work with an arsehole. <laughs>